Innovation and creation are such powerful abilities to have. To wake up in the morning with a brand new product idea and to be able to honestly say that you have so many ideas and not enough time to create them all is a great feeling indeed. It's also very profitable as you can imagine. Thankfully, this is no naturally occurring phenomenon and can be learned, practiced and mastered to the point of at least one new idea a day. The great thing here is that this doesn't just apply to online marketing either. It can be put to use in almost any type of business you can think of. All you need is the ability to observe, listen and pay attention to what's going on around you, and the ability to think laterally. It's not a complicated process at all, and doesn't even require an amazing imagination or creativeness. Strange that most people don't seem to have this ability, yet it's sitting there, ready for the taking. I'm going to teach you how to use this simple method now. Practice makes perfect, but start now and along with the info products guides that follow, you'll be able to come up with ideas for, and create as many products as you want, whenever and however often you wish to do so. 2. Goals of this section. To get your creative juices flowing. To get you creating products and services using ideas you never thought you could come up with. To make sure that you always have folders packed with ideas and inspiration for future products and services. To show you how to bring your new ideas to life, where others are stuck with an empty screen and writer's block. To open your mind and encourage free thinking. To show you the methods I use every day to come up with many new ideas without even having to think about it. To immediately throw out that notion of not having any products to promote and never have to find yourself there again. To inspire you and give you and your business a shove in the forward direction. To get you to start taking action on every idea you have. You'll never have nothing to do ever again. To show you how to develop ideas into multiple products, ideas that didn't seem viable at all when you first thought of them that go on to make tens of thousands of dollars worth of sales. 3. Getting creative. The lifeblood of our businesses. Creating valuable products from the limited resources we have at hand, and turning them into something that's commercially viable, to be sold to people or businesses all over the world. It's what we do, and just taking this step and creating something that sells should make you very proud of yourself indeed. With a limited budget, and a tiny amount of resources, we can still create something amazing. The problem is, most people don't know how to do this properly, or effectively. People I meet every day tell me they wish they could start their own businesses, and even some close friends have come to me and told me this. My usual reaction is, so if you want to, why don't you, and aside from the I don't have enough money replies, the most common thing they say to me is I can't, because I don't know what to sell. That's a huge problem in itself. One which I'm going to try and solve for you today, right here, right now, so much so that you'll have no problem coming up with ideas for new and exciting products that can viably be sold to a market that either already exists, or one you create for yourself in extreme circumstances I'll show you how later. If that sounds complicated, or you're worried that you don't have the imagination, or you never get any good ideas, don't be. That's why I'm here, and why I'm writing. To show you that you don't have to be some super genius that comes up with multi-million dollar ideas on a daily basis to be successful. Aside from the main problem of not having any ideas, I'm going to show you what to do with old ideas, how to develop them and change them to suit particular groups of people, and make a good, quality, solid and reliable product out of something that originally looked like a dead loss. Also, to make things airtight, so you're totally confident about what you're creating, I'm also going to show you how to spot the ideas that won't work, before you even hit the planning stages. Your time is valuable, let's not waste it exploring unreasonable or unproductive opportunities. Now I'm really hoping that this will inspire you, and all the time you're here reading, be thinking about what kind of products that you can create. As we go through each point it'll be easier to come up with ideas there's also something else I'd like you to not worry about, and that's the amount of ideas you're going to come up with. If it's just one, great, if it's more, that's great too. Let me tell you though, once you've launched a product, the ideas flow even more easily, and the longer you spend analyzing and working within a particular market, the more ideas you'll come up with, some even directly through trying to overcome problems and any brick walls you may hit whilst developing your own business. 
I'll be honest with you, last night I put down the plan for this part of course and what I wanted to cover, but I had to stop part way through because ideas just kept coming to me. I've got another 5 products now that I'm hoping to release within the next 2 years, not mention the other folders full of concept ideas that have yet to be developed. The bottom line is I love writing about this stuff, the possibilities get me excited every time I think about it. I hope it'll do the same for you, so without further delay let me give you one very important piece of advice to get us started. 3A. Keep everything. That one piece of advice is keep everything. If you haven't got one already, head into the folder containing all your business ideas, and create an in-concept folder. This is where you'll put your ideas, the good, the bad, and the downright crazy. No matter what it is, every time you come up with something, create a new notepad file, name it with your new and working product name, and write a short excerpt inside on what it's going to do for the person that buys it, and then go back to what you were working on. The reason for this won't mean much if you haven't already got some ideas in here, so I'll explain after we've got you your first new ideas. 3B. Getting the ideas flowing. Alright, so let's get some ideas flowing and look at exactly how to create some products. There are three main means and methods to creating products, and one way to cheat, and use other people's products. Oddly enough, it's rare that this is done correctly, but either way, let's look at some examples and get some ideas going of your own first. The first and probably the most widely used is the improvement factor. It's real simple and something that you should definitely learn to look out for. It's one of those annoying things that you can't get out of your head once someone's pointed it out and you start noticing it, and that's a good thing, because it means more ideas for you. It's a relatively simple concept, and it's hard not to see, but it's just such an automatic reaction, and something that brushes over in conversation that you may not pick up on it, or take it seriously. I believe that this is why so many people miss this. How many times have you been using a particular product, or service, and got frustrated, annoyed, or disappointed, because even though it may be a great product, you've still found yourself saying, this would be much easier if product X did this too, or, this is taking too long, if only product X would do it like this. Something that you may grumble about to friends, family or work colleagues in passing could be your next product. You can take this product, use its concept and its basic idea and improve it to suit your needs even better than it did before. This is constantly happening with everything, and I guarantee you'll find loads of these daily. Look around, the next cell phone is just another cell phone, but better. It's still a cell phone but it has more features. What about that supercomputer you've seen out there that you'd love to get your hands on? Yours is okay, it works, so why would you want another one? Because it's faster, it's sleeker, it looks better, it's more reliable, and it can do things that yours can't. How about that online marketing report that you read the other day? It was great, but why would you want to buy another one? Because it was missing info, because it wasn't presented in a clear way or wasn't easy to use. See what I mean? It applies to everything and it's all around us, and it's happening right now, online and offline. 3C. Problems and Solutions. Let's look at it another way. We all have problems, right? Products and services are there help us solve those problems, but when you've found a problem with the product that's supposed to solve the problem in the first place, there's your way in. That's your little space there to recreate these products, but give them a twist. Make them better, faster, cleaner, more reliable, more cost-effective, better presented, you get the idea. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to go out, buy people's stuff, and just clone it and give it a fancy new name and change the layout a bit and sell it on. Aside from probably getting you into trouble with copyright laws and such, it's just not practical or ethical. What I am showing you though is that you can take basic ideas, and you can make them a better solution to a specific problem from the ground up. Now, no matter how much I tell you this, nothing that I know of is better than a little bit of practical experience. What I want you to do is program this method into the back of your mind. I can't guarantee that you've come up with something already, if you have, great, but it's most likely that you won't have. Not to worry. That's because you're probably not using any particular products right now aside from your chair, your glasses and maybe a drink. 3D. Go about your business. 
mix with your market so here's what I want you do. When you're done reading this, go about your day-to-day -day business in the normal way, but notice everything. If you're in online marketing, every time you use a product that doesn't have an option or a feature that would make your life easier, note it down. Whatever your field of expertise, the best way to come up with ideas and innovations related to releasing a product into that particular market, is to get in there, and start using other people's stuff, and really brining to the front of your mind the problems that you encounter when using them. It's hard when you're looking from the outside in to come up with these ideas, so I don't want you to worry if you haven't come up with anything viable yet. It's likely because you aren't using other people's stuff right now. Once you've been doing this for a few days, you'll learn to spot things like this almost by second nature, and you won't have to keep actually looking for problems and improvements that you could make. Start practicing now, and once it starts to sink in, you'll find yourself randomly stop, and announce that the product you're using isn't correctly addressing your needs, and you'll be able to add something into that concept folder that does address your needs correctly, or more quickly, or more reliably. Keep it in mind, and practice it often. Mix with your market. If you're not using a selection of products and services in the market you're thinking of breaking into, you won't get any ideas. That'd be like me trying to come up with an innovative new idea to introduce into the field of ice hockey when I don't know anything about it. 3E. Never dismiss anything. Now let me open your mind a little bit with something that I really think is the key to mastering this. I do not ever want you to dismiss an idea that you come up with. No matter how wacky or crazy it seems, no matter why you think it won't work. Just put it in that folder for now. I'll tell you why. Ever had a sudden idea about anything that you think, hey, wow, I just had this great idea, then you say something along the lines of, oh, oh no. Never mind, that won't work because of insert problem here. This is what blocked me when I first started trying to master this, and I was wondering why I wasn't coming up with any ideas to put in my folder. It's simple, and it's natural. If you come up with an idea and instantly start finding problems with it, you'll dismiss it. Kind of an ah oh well, that won't work approach. This will get you nowhere. Open your mind a little, and don't start dismissing things on a whim because they seem impractical or even impossible at first glance. We'll talk more about this later, but let me tell you, I have a concept folder, just like yours, neatly tucked up in my business documents folder. Some ideas in there, when I wrote them were impractical, there was no market for some of them, some I couldn't afford, and some just needed large numbers of customers to pull off effectively. Today, right this moment as I type, and possibly years after I've come up with these ideas, I'm actively working on three of them. Think about that, three ideas which seemed like they'd never happen last year, and one of them even stretches back over three and a half years that's just now become a viable option. Things change quickly, times are moving faster than ever before. Never forget, keep an open mind, and don't start placing these limits on yourself before you start. Once we remove those limits, the ideas will start flowing. Start recording them. One of them may well be the next big thing in your field of expertise. More on how to sort the good from the not-so-good ideas later, with some simple checklists that you can use. Some examples. For now though, here's an example of the above method. So here's me, trying to put up my first website in which I just happened to opt for what was at the time, probably the most complicated website you could put out with regards to how many different types of resources you needed. It was a membership site, and I wanted fully functional affiliate management, fully functional access management and a totally automated system that would deal with everything for me, on autopilot, and that's before we even look at the autoresponder and advert tracking scripts that were in the membership area. Now at the time, I couldn't find a system that did everything I wanted it to do. Either it was too simple and there wasn't enough customization, or it was super complicated, costs $5,000 to buy, and wouldn't fit in with the other scripts I had up there. So, me being a bit of a dreamer and liking to play with money I don't have, I started writing down ideas, and everything I needed, how much it was costing me to try and hook the six or so scripts up to function as I needed for my business. This is how my concept folder started. 
Understand this was five years ago or more, and seeing as I was still working a job and just got my own place back then, I couldn't afford to go all out and get something built that I wanted. So anyway, the idea and the picture of this perfect system sits in my concept folder, like the one you created earlier. Five years later and staring 2005 in the face, this very system is now over $8,000 down the line in development costs, including some very personalized scripts and nine months into its creation. So what would have happened if I deleted this idea five years ago because it cost too much, and it wasn't viable back then? I'll tell you what, I would have lost what's going to form the base of my next two products, a product with a $700 to $800 price tag, which even if it only sold a rather shoddy 75 copies in its whole entire product lifetime, would make a nice tidy $50,000 profit. See how important this is? Not only would dismissing the idea in the first place have lost me a perfectly good product for the future, but dismissing it before it even got started because I didn't have the funds at the time, or the resources and knowledge to promote this to a wide enough audience would have been a crime, and I wouldn't have even known it. I hope I've also shown you how the idea came about originally and what I mean about mixing with your market, and solving your own problems with your own products. There are so many other examples I can think of, this site for example. I've always wanted to share what I've seen, experienced and learned with other marketers, but I'd just never had the time to write and develop such a course before, but things changed. I could go on forever, but I think the point has been put across now, and it's up to you to fill that folder with, maybe, and could be products without prejudice. Now before we move on, I want to say, if you've been inspired, or this report has hit you hard and sparked your imagination so far, and you're coming up with ideas already, go, go now and write them down, record them. Do this anytime you get an idea for a new product. Drop everything, record it, then come back to what you were doing before the subject changes and your train of thought is directed elsewhere. 3 grams. Method number 2. And on that note, we're going to change the subject a little here to look at the second way of creating products. This time, we have a little twist on the improvement method we talked about above. This one is a little less general, and something you're most likely going to come up with when looking at the ideas you gained in method 1. I like to call this one nickifying. Strange, yes, and there's no doubt in my mind that there is in fact no such word, however, for the examples I'm about to give you, there's no other way to sum it up like that. So what is nickifying? Well, it's as it says really. It's taking a product that has a wide audience, and twisting it, changing something about it again, but this time, instead of trying to improve it, you're evolving it in such a way that you're reaching a very specific, much more targeted market that may be untapped. Let's look at some real-world examples. The one that immediately springs to mind is the rise of Alcopops. I'm not sure what you call them in the US, or Canada, or wherever you may be, but over here in the UK that's what they're called. Now the drinks industry was real clever with this and took something that used to be marketed to an older generation of drinkers, and turned it into a colorful, soda-like tasting pleasant drink that is targeted at younger people. It's still alcohol. It's the same product, they just gave it a twist, added a little something, and voila, brand new market. A very clever move indeed. Now this one is a little harder to grasp, and hurts my brain a little more than the improvement factor, so let's look at a few more examples. How about processors for computers? Just starting to emerge are the above and beyond processors that aren't just for the mass market, but they've been tailored to suit developers, designers, multitaskers and servers specifically. It's the same again, it's still a processor, but it's been tailored to a specific market. In this example, rather than change the target market completely, they've kept it the same but introduced and tailored their products to very specialized tasks. One last example here, let's look at this in an online marketing sense. Looking around you, I'm sure you'll find there's no shortage of dodgy old e-books and a lot of very general products about, so us as marketers have started to do this, either by taking a specific set of tactics and tying them into an original named system to be carried out in a particular way, such as this site for example, or taking it to the major extreme and just extracting one single subject and creating a product around it. A whole course about copywriting for websites, a whole course about joint ventures or easy management and creation. 
So there we have it, you can take an existing idea or concept for a product, and if you really can't use method number one to improve on the job it does, can you either go specialized and target it at a specific market, or even totally change the product to appeal to a different, untapped market. These are generally the alternatives to mass market products, targeting every computer owner, or targeting every online marketer isn't always the answer. Use method 1 to come up with ideas, use method 2 to refine your ideas, and come up with alternative angles that may not have been immediately obvious. 3H. Most exciting number 3 third is the most exciting, but to this date still escapes me. That doesn't mean it has to escape you though. If you make this one, you've hit it big. Method 3 is the ultimate heart of hards, so I don't suggest you dwell on it for too long, but I just want you to know it's there. And method number 3 is, create something totally new, original, unseen and unique. If you pull this one off, it'll be nothing short of amazing, and I don't suggest you lay awake at night trying to come up with totally new ideas for products either. It'll drive you nuts. What I will say is that know that pioneers of particular products I envy. They come up with brand spanking new ideas, and they launch them to a hungry market looking for something fresh. It's a little like being an inventor you could say. It sure is a rare thing. How many inventors do you know that come up with ideas that are in everyday use today? But look at it this way, if you come up with a solution to a problem that you think could possibly sell to customers, or create a product out of something that hasn't been done before, don't tell anyone the details until you launch or get a patent. It's definitely not unrealistic or irrelevant for me to be mentioning this though, as there are people out there who have done it. I remember reading a report a year or so back about a mother who had a problem feeding her baby, so she came up with this new type of device, patented it and it's selling worldwide today, and it's all hers for the taking. There are some successful modern innovators. If you end up being one of them, I salute you. Be aware though, that this is both risky and expensive in most cases. It's far safer to stick with methods 1, 2 and 4. The fourth and final method of getting yourself a product to sell is to cheat. And that's to sell other people's stuff. Not through affiliate systems however, but through resell rights. The sad fact is most people I see get this totally wrong, and wind up not selling much at all, or even losing cash on their initial investment to get the product in the first place. The reason I put this at the end here is really because it's far more valuable for you to come up with your own ideas using the above methods, especially the improvement one, as that gives you total freedom as to when, where and how you release products. And if you're not in online marketing directly, you could have a job finding them in the first place. So, let's get the lowdown on resell rights. They're a quick way for a product owner to make cash, by selling rights allowing others to sell their product for 100% profit. That's all very well, but if you're going to sell a resale rights product be careful, and don't fluff up like so many seem to do when they see dollar signs floating in front of their eyes. 3i. Points to keep in mind. Three things I'm going to brush over in this section for future reference. Firstly, think about the saturation. If you're buying a resale product to sell on, how many copies are they selling, and what kind of rules do they have in place? Always ask this question. I don't want you going off and buying a resale package with full rights for $800, designing and putting up a website and sales system, then finding out that the product you're about to try and sell for $200 is being given away as a free bonus on hundreds of other sites, because the original seller didn't have a rule in place preventing this devaluing of the package. The second thing I'd like to talk to you about is quality. Look for quality in resale products. I can't count the number of times I've had seen random ads through e-zines, or landing in my inbox from people trying to flog a $100 product to me, only to find out that the date on the front cover of the report is 1996 or something stupid like that. Watch for this if you're looking to sell something on. You don't want to get your hands on an old shoddy product that you can't shift for that reason. Okay, that's all of the practical side of creating your own products, coming up with your own ideas, improving and innovating. I really enjoyed writing this one, and if all goes well, you'll have been inspired by it, too. Especially take note of method 1, learn it, keep an open mind, don't set yourself obstacles before you've even come up with the ideas themselves and the ideas will flow. 
In fact, I'm interested to know what you came up with using this report. Email me and let me know even after you've launched and produced the product if you feel more comfortable. Trust me though, I've got enough to keep me busy for quite a few years yet already and using this method, you should gain this hefty advantage too. In the next report, we'll be looking at how to go a step further and evaluate your ideas. A simple checklist you can use to see whether they're ready to be launched, now, or in the future. I'll also show you the three main reasons why that concept and writing stuff down is so important, and how, back in my early days in marketing, I slipped up with this, and it cost me big. Summary. This is one of the most important sections, if you're going to succeed. We need to get your creative juices flowing right now allowing you to pull together ideas that will turn into full-scale, viable, sellable and profitable products. Don't underestimate this, once you have this down, you'll find yourself with a never-ending flow of ideas and products to develop far into the future, your only tools being your mind, and a blank piece of paper. The number one reaction when I suggest someone starts his or her own business, is but I don't have anything to sell, or I don't know what to sell. Let's set the wheel in motion and begin to solve this problem right now. If you're thinking that you lack imagination, or that you don't have the ideas or the experience to create your own products, remember this, everyone that came before you, and everyone that will come after you will always create their first product with no experience whatsoever. You can do this too and it'll make you more money than any flutter or big investment on leads or purchased ads or anything like that will. Let's also look at the second important aspect of product creation. Taking old ideas or previously non-viable ideas and turning them into something sellable, something solid, reliable and profitable, all from something that looked like a dead loss or impossible just a few months ago. Two important points before we get started. 1. This will get progressively easier as you go along. 2. I'd like you to make a point of not worrying about how many ideas you come up with, or the quality of your ideas, or time limits, and any other constraints. We need to throw all this out of the window right now. Times and deadlines don't exist all there is, is you, your mind, and this report getting your full concentration. The longer that you spend within your target market, and looking at other people's products, the more ideas you'll be able to generate, because you'll have more knowledge of what people want. So don't worry about only coming up with a few relating to your target market. After each product launch, your ideas will grow to such high numbers you won't have enough time to carry each and every one one of them out. I'll be honest. I've been using this method for a long period of time now, maybe 4 or 5 years in total. Things happen all the time. For example, last night I was simply writing the plan for this report and looking at what I wanted to cover and I had to stop, because ideas kept coming to me over and over. In the time it took to plan a section, which took no longer than it takes to write a full three pages of text, I'd come out with no less than five individual new product ideas, some of which you'll see released when I'm done with the projects I'm working on right now. That's how powerful this is. One piece of important advice. Keep everything. Write everything down, every idea, every glimpse of a new product or service that might work. If you haven't done so already, create an in-concept folder, and within this every time you get an idea, whether it's viable, good, bad, strange, seemingly impossible or downright crazy, write it down. You'll see why this is imperative later in this section. Let's get some ideas flowing right now by looking at the three main ways to create a product, looking first at improvement. Looking at the tools that you use that don't do their job adequately. A relatively simple concept that doesn't take into account viability to physically create these products at any stage, and none of these idea pooling stages will, I still need you to write them down, because it's amazing what they can morph into later. Creating products in this way is an automatic reaction for many people and they don't even realize it. In fact it occurs so often in our everyday lives, and is so obvious this is why I think people miss it. Have you ever been using a product or service, and found yourself saying, this would be so much easier if X product did Y action? How about being in a situation and creating something, or carrying out some task and said to yourself, it would be so much easier if I had something that did this for me? A product that family and friends grumble about to you because it doesn't do its job, or it doesn't do everything it could to make their life easier. 
ever heard people around you making statements or talking about this? You simply take the product and add to it. After all you're a person, a potential customer, so is your family or friend that grumbled about not having the tools to do a job. If someone wants it, it immediately becomes a viable idea. Everyone does this at some point or another through his or her business. Look at that supercomputer that you'd like to get your hands on. Yours is okay, why do you want a new one? Because it's better, because it makes your life easier, solves your problems and does something that previous one didn't. How about cell phones? The standard brick phones as I call them that we used to use when cell phones first came about were okay, so why get a new one? Because they're more comfortable, the technology is advanced, the new ideas and features solve your problems and help you do something you couldn't do before, or in an easier way, or more quickly. Start to look around you, and if you've ever seen an original concept taken by one business, and majorly improved upon by another business, you can see the effect of this method. Don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to go out and copy everyone, as that would probably get you into trouble, not to mention have moral issues, but what I am showing you is if it exists, it can be improved, altered to target a different market, have features added, improved or taken away to provide an answer for the I wish product X did this as well. Practice and experience is going to make this easier, so for the rest of the week, I want you to look at things in a new light. Don't go looking for things or try and come up with new products, just go about your daily business, using the tools you normally use and watch out for those thoughts of wishing something was added, or done differently. Ignore the fact that it's not in your target market, ignore any costs or any problems involved with producing the product, ignore the fact that you're not interested in that market, because when you start mixing with your own market again and have learned to think this way, things will start to happen automatically that do relate to your target market. Don't dismiss anything. Here's why. Back when I first started online marketing, I had so many ideas and hopes for the future. I wrote them all down and didn't dismiss them because my current situation couldn't turn them into reality. Five or six years later, here I am working on two of them. What would have happened if I'd ditched those ideas? Who knows how many tens of thousands of dollars I wouldn't have earned by dismissing an idea so early. If you've been inspired, and this report has hit you hard and sparked your imagination, go create. Always have this method in the back of your mind, and take note when you wish something would do something it doesn't do. When you get an idea, stop, drop everything, don't think, don't dismiss, don't say but I can't because of insert problem here, just write it down and keep it, otherwise you will forget, and you will potentially lose tens of thousands of dollars for each and every idea you don't write down immediately. Method 2 is Nikifying. Taking a product, and changing it in such a way that the underlying product hasn't changed, but it's aimed at a completely different market. This time, rather than improving the product, you're evolving it. Let's look at a real-world example. Alcohol is a good one. It used to be all beers and spirits aimed at the older pub drinkers. Not long ago, the drinks industry started releasing a different kind of alcohol, the Alcopop. Brightly colored, marketed as fashionable, and sold to a much younger audience, and it became massively big business, as you can see shelves are stacked full of sweet-tasting, vibrant colored drinks nowadays. It's still alcohol, but it's been taken, evolved, not necessarily improved, nickified and aimed at a completely different market. Ignoring the ethics of the whole alcohol for youngsters for now, it's just the example and demonstration we want to look at. How about computer processors and computer peripherals? Components are out there that sell very well that aren't tailored to the mass market, but for developers and high-end users only. It's still the same peripheral, but it's been both improved and nickified so to speak. So you see, niches aren't all about targeting a smaller market. Especially with the first example, you can target huge new markets just by changing the way the product is marketed as a whole. Method 3 is the most exciting of all, and that's coming up with your own totally 100% original idea for a product or service. This one still escapes me, but it doesn't mean it has to escape you. It's the ultimate hardest of the hard, doing a simple search on Google so see if it exists already, and already finding it does isn't such a rare thing. It's not unrealistic or irrelevant for me to tell you about this however, because there are of course people out there that have done it pioneers of banned new concepts or products. 
I remember reading an article on a mother that came up with a brand new and innovative solution for baby feeding. Today it's being sold all over the world and the idea is all hers, so modern innovation and pioneering creations are possible, if you end up with one of them, I salute you. Get a patent. The fourth and final method of product creation is resell rights. Cheating as I call it. Selling other people's stuff as your own. You still get all the power of owning your own product, but it's just not yours. It's a shame that most people get this wrong and end up selling 1980s e-books written on cliché subjects for $5 and expect to get rich. We'll talk about this later in detail, but for now, all I want you to do is create your own products and come up with all the ideas for yourself, just to prove that you can do it over and over again, all the time, whenever you feel like it.